Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. I'm recording this video as I await the presentation from Elon Musk about Starship developments. And that will be you know, in about three and a half hours. So yes, I am going to do a Starship thing while I wait. And I am going to do the thing that people have asked me to do very frequently, even though I don't want to. And that is the Starship Super Heavy Heavy. Yes, here it is. Uh, there are complications to this, but we're going to go with it. And we are going to see if this arrangement, inadvisable as it is, uh, can launch Starship directly to the moon and then have it return. The goal is to get into lunar orbit and then return. Uh, right now, our configuration is 33 engines on each of the cores, except for the a center core. I took 16 engines off, so there should be 17 engines, right? 17 engines. So we've got uh, the 13 engines in the center there, and then four extra engines. And that's to allow the core to last longer, because we don't want it running out at the same time. Uh, I, of course, there's the option of putting vacuum engines on it, etc. But I wanted the least change sort of configuration, and this seemed like the thing, just take some engines off. And so, yeah, we have taken 16 engines off. There are no grid fins on the core because it's not coming back. <laughs> so uh, just grid fins on the boosters. That's a whole complicated business. I have not tested this out yet, right? This is going to be the test. And so we will see how it works. And the... The nose cones get awful close to those fins. Uh, so that is a note. That is a issue in this arrangement. Heck, there's a lot of issues in this arrangement, like does the Super Heavy enough, uh, have enough structural integrity to have two boosters on the side? I doubt it. It's rather a tin can, so yeah, it's not that reinforced, I don't think. Well, you never know. But anyway, we are just testing the delta V situation. We're getting off the pad with 1.59 thrust to weight ratio, which is healthy. And so the fact that we are missing 16 engines on the core isn't going to hurt anything there. And again, we can improve performance by uh, throwing on some vacuum engines there instead and see what happens. But we'll just go with this for now. And we are going with the nine engine Starship. And this is a 1600 ton Starship. So. Full of fuel, plenty of thrust to weight ratio, and yep, we will see what happens. Okay, I decided that we would launch at the Cape for the scenery. Uh, it started off with a suspicious 0.1 meter per second, which sometimes suggests Krakenage, but I think we were able to time warp to daylight and hopefully it's stabilized. So, uh, well, we should line up with the moon first. Okay, let's get this over with. Throttle up, SAS on, uh, hold on to your ears, ignition. And launch. Well, we are going up. No cracking so far. The lag is pretty intense. Actually, one reason I'm doing this is because I'm working on a computer upgrade. I've got a new computer built already, and that is an i5-12600K. It'll share the same graphics card I have right now, the G uh, RTX 2070. Uh, but, of course, the new CPU is going to improve things, especially since KSP is very CPU heavy. And there'll be newer RAM, it'll, just, it'll be DDR4, not DDR3. And so we'll see how this performs there. Basically, this will be a benchmark. This and the monument launcher will be a benchmark. I better not turn too quickly. It's sort of deceptive. I've got the booster engines on an action group so we can switch them off for their return. So we will reserve fuel. To some extent, it's choppy because I've left this install of KSP on for a while. So that's usually not good. It's probably paged out quite a lot of stuff. In other words, the stuff is no longer in RAM. It's in the system page file. As far as Elon Musk's presentation is concerned, I'm mostly interested in the Lunar Starship. I, I especially want to know what those upper engines are, if he's going to tell us. 
Of course, I'll take any numbers. I'm not too interested in the words. I'm mostly interested in numbers. Def but except for dates. I don't care about dates. <laughs> Probably best not to bother with the dates at all, really. During a live stream, we re recently did a test launch of the Monument Rocket. It had a payload. The Monument Rocket, as far as I'm concerned, is the largest regular service rocket around in KSP. I know there are some bigger rockets that are special and one-offs, but the Monument Rocket is a regular service rocket. Anyway, we timed its launch and it was 24 minutes real time. So not too bad. We'll see what the new computer does. There's two separate things though. There's how long it takes to get to orbit and then there's the frame rate, rate while doing it. This basically seems to have like a frame rate of one per second or something. Well, maybe it's faster now as we get away from the cape and the buildings. But yeah, that's different from the physics tick. In other words, how many real time seconds uh, it takes for us to get one in-game second. Now this is the cargo starship, but I did put a payload in. I decided that uh, a small payload could stand in for the additional mass that, you know, a crew would need. I, I put 35 tons in. So this isn't a full load or anything. This is just trying to get some people directly over to the moon quickly. We can scale up as necessary, but I just wanted to work first of all, and then as we do other things, we can improve upon that. Well, getting close to the point where we find out where those separatrons I put on will do the trick. They were pretty small. Might need to double up on them. Okay, we need to shut those down and separate. I don't know if that's really enough for them to get back. Let me see. Uh, we might not have left enough in them. Ooh. They're sort of going askew there. Oh, I guess I accidentally left one on. <laughs> it's sort of doing a, a sort of shuttle SRB sort of thing. I forgot to action group that one. I guess that's fine. I hear some explosions in the distance, and I think the two other starships are getting ripped apart. You can see a whole lot of debris there. It actually had some pauses in the game. Uh, there's a lot of debris. I think their uh, re-entry did not go so well there, but it was uncontrolled after all. Remember, uh, even though the render range is 2.25 kilometers, the physics range continues to 22.5 kilometers, so for a while we were still in physics range. Okay, getting ready for first stage out here. There we go, separation and ignition. Off that goes. Alright, let's roll around while we're at it. And just for the heck of it, I'm gonna get the fins down. Oh, they just sort of snap weirdly. Now we have frame rate. Okay, well, we can probably turn off the sea level ones. Alright, just on vacuum and RCS. Again, we have to transfer to the moon get into orbit around the moon, and then return. But I'm not gonna do the final descent part, it depends on how much delta V we have on return and I'll just rule it based on that. But I don't think the... I haven't gotten the starship balance right with the nine engines on the tail yet. So we are in orbit. We'll have 2000 meters per second after transferring. So we'll just verify everything, but it's Looking like we'll have about 400 for touchdown after return like this, which might not be enough. It depends on what orbit we get into around the moon, though. If we were just rendezvousing with Lunar Gateway, that would be easier. Okay, that looks good to me. 
Okay, here we go. And transmitter injection. We're just gonna go full throttle here, just for the sake of the timing. And up, oh, we'll need a little bit more. Okay, well we have a little bit more than I thought we would. 2,122. Okay. We have our encounter. And we are proceeding. We do have boil off though. So that's a question mark situation. And I'll turn on the fuel cells. That's another thing. I've got the fuel cells running on the methane oxygen. Shouldn't consume very much, but... Oh, I guess one thing that they could tell us about Starship is how it's going to generate electric charge. I mean, I assume solar panels, but we haven't seen anything since the big fan solar panels of ITS, right? So I don't know what the solar panels look like. Yep, we're plunging at the moon. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, selling the fuel down. One problem with Starship at this point is that it's got a lot of thrust weight ratio. Might have to shut a few engines down here. I mean, even with the throttling. Obviously this does not allow for maneuvers around the moon in the meantime. But we'll just assume that that's part of the payload. So whatever maneuvers we need will come out of the 35 tons we have up there. Well, it's only got a 12 second burn time here. Signing the fuel down. Ah, oh, we were too late. <laughs> well, that'll be good enough, I'm sure. Alright, ignition. Well, we'll try and bring it into the atmosphere, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to look good. Let's just try and... I don't know if that would be straight down or not. Our ballistic coefficient should be interesting. Anyway, whatever happens, the next engines to do anything would be the sea level engines, so... We'll just switch. 476 meters per second. I don't know if that's enough for the whole spin around and touchdown thing. Certainly wouldn't be enough for me. Definitely not coming down where we're probably should be coming down. This is an interesting path back. Actually, there's possibilities with this. But yeah. So, taking a look at the COM-COL situation. Problem is the COL is never where I think it ought to be. Well, first of all, we're not in the atmosphere, so it's not going to show us that. And by the time we're in the atmosphere, it's probably going to be too late. Well, we are in the atmosphere. Now, well, actually, the COL is not too bad. I, maybe I fixed it. There's hope. We can sort of control the situation by using the pins, like if we pin that and ploy, we can move it back. I don't know why it moves it down. When, I think the things are opposite the way they ought to be. It should move forward because uh, they're flat out right now. So I think it's doing things opposite. Ultimately, then, we'll want to fold up the forward fins to get onto the tail. Theory. Anyway, we'll see. But that would be opposite what we want, uh, we would expect, so. Anyway, we'll leave it be for now. And it's not really balancing super well right now. Yeah, it's max out pitch anyway, even though the center of lift and center of mass looked close together, it's not where it needs to be. It's going inverted. Let me just make sure 
from here. Yeah, it is controlling as expected. Hmm. Let's try and go lower in pitch in this direction. Rather not flip on the tail just yet. Well, coming straight back from the moon, we do expect it to get super hot. Don't know if the real starship can even manage it. We'll have to figure that out, but... I set it so that this could. Oh, now it's pitching down too much. It's so complicated. It goes like that. Maybe I should retract these. Oh, but then that puts it in a spin. Oh, I need to action group those. Now we're all over the place. And we've actually bounced out. So we need to come in lower. Now the problem with going around is that we have more boil off. Oh, and the radiation. Let's not talk about that. Well, here we go. Oh, well, let's bring that periapsis down. Let's make it more convincing. Don't know if that's got to be too much for this to survive. I guess we're going to find out. I'm going to try and go for a shallower angle. It might be easier to control instead of 60 degrees initially. Well, this is obviously not an approach you would like. South Atlantic. Okay. Let's see, much lower in the atmosphere this time. Oh, suddenly the center of lift snapped all the way back there. I don't get it. Um, fine, let me just retract these. In uh, Logically, that would move the center lift forward. And it did this time. It's just weird. Uh, that goes all over the place. It's probably going to be very finicky. The shuttle was too. It's like within one meter... Everything had to be. Well, this is awkward. Problem is when it's pointing nose first at the prograde direction that gets practically no drag, so... Okay, well... Doesn't look like it's actually gonna blow up. Um, I don't think we're reaching, like, Australia or anything that's over here. So it's gonna be water under us anyway. But we are coming down this time. Oh god, it all exploded. It all exploded. And the payload has exploded. All right, well, it served us right. It was obviously, it was spinning around like that in a way that should explode, so. All right, we'll need to work on that. But, okay, that is, that is Starship super heavy heavy. <laughs> I didn't want to do it. You guys made me do it. But there you have it. Variations may come, but... At least on launch we saw the computer was struggling and we'll see how the new computer does by comparison. So I guess I have to try this again. But for now, and with me reverting back to vehicle assembly, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.